We're in the back of uh, Static Danny's new project car. So we're at our little reveal spot. And of course, there's a lot of burnout marks here and drifting marks, so they started to put like speed bumps everywhere. What's up guys? Welcome back to Static Garage. Today, we're back where we first started. And like Martin said, that's because I do have something very special to reveal for you guys. Oh, what's up, Static? Oh, what's Cha-cha? Oh, what's up, Martin? Oh, Enough talking. Let me reveal to you guys the new project. It's so tiny, fool. I'm too big for it. I don't even know how to start. Close it. Oh shit, it got real. There's so much space. Damn, they even gave you tools so you could fix it when it breaks down. I wish mine had that because it breaks down all the time. You guys just seen it. I did get a Lexus IS300 or Alteza if you want to be JDM. This has been one of my dream cars and I did end up really liking it when one of my cousins actually bought one for his 18th birthday and I was around probably like 15 then and I just fell in love with it. It's just so clean and so nice and after I seen all the mods and aftermarket support from and that it had an NA2J I was like damn I gotta have one but obviously time went on I stopped thinking about it. When I wanted to get rid of the E46 and find myself a new daily what's better than to get a four-door supra when Chacha said that he was down to pick up the e46 i immediately started looking for is 300s one of my goals was to get both my dream cars a daily and a weekend project before i turned 20 and i can say i finally achieved that yes there's so much more cars that i want to get in my possession just to say that i have two cars that i'm in love with and really enjoy is probably the best thing ever i had three options that i was looking for either a gray one which was probably like the lowest one that i would get or the least likely to get i i wanted a charcoal one and i wanted a black one i know black was going to be my top pick but i was kind of happy i didn't get it just because i know since it's my daily it's going to get dirty very fast and obviously it would drive me crazy just like the e30 does so i was looking at a charcoal one and it only had a hundred thousand miles but they didn't want to drive the price on it and i wasn't willing to spend anything more than five thousand dollars that was my goal to find an is 300 and i know these cars actually go for a lot here in socal and you can actually pick up an e46 for around the same price so that's what's crazy about it and a manual too so the is 300 and as you've seen in the edit it is an automatic but please just let me explain later in the video so this car in particular has 175,000 miles so it does have quite a lot but obviously for this engine since it is a 2jz and it is toyota that's pretty much nothing if you keep it maintained it is a single owner and that's one of the reasons why i really like the car it's been in no accidents and it has zero leaks and it drives really really nice it did get repainted and i can tell that it was a single stage so that's the only thing that i don't really like just because it's not as glossy as i would like it so obviously i might either repaint it the original color probably soon or just paint it a crazy color later on. I was able to find pretty much every service record at Toyota because obviously since I work there, I'm able to get that information. So it was really nice to be able to see everything that was done. And it just obviously gave me peace of mind that this car wasn't getting abused and wasn't just getting half-assed jobs. As you can see, there's hardly any dents on the car. Aside from the paint job, I think my biggest gripe is the fact that the interior is pretty stained and it's not the best. These cars are notorious for having beat up interiors, especially with this rubber trim right here. This gets messed up all the time. And I feel like that's the thing that I'm definitely going to miss about the E46 is that it's so clean inside. Maybe I'm not on the outside, but it's so clean inside. Let me give you guys a couple reasons why I didn't end up getting a manual. 
When I was looking into IS 300s, I was hearing that manuals were super rare, and I tried finding them myself, and I did, but they were literally like either 7,000 for a clapped one up, and I've seen some for $10,000 with the same miles as this car, just because of the manual and obviously pictures are deceiving all the cars i want to go look at look really clean but obviously they had their issues this is the only car besides the interior that was so mint and every maintenance thing has been done on this car to keep it running how it should be i was able to look online and find a forum where this guy made a list of every part number available to do a manual swap for every nut and bolt if you add it all up it comes to around five thousand dollars but I'm obviously able to get it at a discounted rate and I'm able to get it all brand new OEM. So I had a choice, either save up and drive the E30, which I need to talk to you guys about that very soon because the E30 isn't running. So it's actually good that I ended up just going through this route or else I would have been fucked. It was either I spend less than 5,000 or around $5,000 for an automatic that's very clean like this one, like I said, single owner, or I get a manual that's been abused because Everyone knows someone who drives a manual is gonna beat on it. Let's just be real. Unless you're an old lady or an old man. Every manual in the world gets abused, no matter what car <laughs> Exactly. It is. It's either spend $4,000 to $5,000 more for a clean manual in the condition that this car is in, or spend $4,000 give you guys way more content to do a full manual swap and get everything brand new and that's pretty much my angle that was my thought process and since it is a daily it kind of is nice to drive an automatic but obviously I would much rather had just gotten a manual if it was for the same price and e46 manuals go for around this price g35s go for around the same price as automatic so if i had the choice to get a manual for the same price or even a thousand dollars more i would have so went for it but it's just the fact that i didn't want to spend way more for a clapped out is 300 just because it was manual i felt like it wasn't worth it and maybe in other states they're cheaper and you can find them a lot cheaper and maybe one will come up that's actually being sold for around this price but like i said everyone was telling me they're really hard to find and actually isn't really that hard from my knowledge to do a manual swap on this and i feel like it'd be pretty dope to show you guys so yeah that's the reason i got an automatic for everyone that's going to be talking shit the moment they see the little auto center console so what do you feel about the new build what do i feel yeah i think it's a great family car so we can take pancake on some road trips take him to the park take him if you guys don't know, just because it is a 2JZ doesn't mean that it's the exact same as the turbo model. The block, crankshaft, and connecting rods are identical. It's just going to be the piston heads and the gasket and the actual head design. And supposedly this head design actually flows better because what they did was pretty much build a turbo engine, which is a 2JZ, took off the turbo and had to make some decent power NA. So they literally had to try to develop this into an NA engine. So my plan is probably to do some head studs, a thicker head gasket and some piston heads and then I'd be probably capable of pushing around 500 wheel. If you guys know anything more about the NA builds, make sure to comment down below or DM me on Instagram because this car is gonna be the one to compete with Martin and he's already sabotaging me by fucking taking out my filter. Why? More air, stupid. So what do you guys think about the new build? I know it's gonna be a lot different than the E46 and I have a lot of you guys that are German fans. You guys probably won't be into this style but I know a lot of you JDM guys will definitely love this build because I'm gonna go crazy on this build. Now that I revealed the car to you guys, we are gonna stop by to get some boba and we and we are finally cutting into Martin's bumper. I remember I told everyone I wanted to do that. Cha-Cha is going to be bringing in the G35. But we are going to be cutting this section right here. <laughs> oh, that shit's fucking hot. There you go. Like that together. Mine's just cleaning it up now with the grinding wheel. Right there, there you go. That shit looks so aggressive. I told you, Martin. Now we gotta push. All right, all right. High five for your specs. This muffler has a silencer built in. So you can see right there, 
you're gonna be able to see it through the back. We are gonna be leaving soon. We're gonna go be meeting up with uh, another 370Z buddy. Shout out to Garagistic. They did send me a free cup holder and they sent it randomly. This is gonna be dope sitting in the E30 so I can actually put a drink because E30s don't come with cup holders. So wanted to include this. Shout out to Garagistic. Make sure to check them out. We'll be getting some parts from them soon. Ugh. All right. I was talking to Martin, and I might pick up these seats for the IS. What do you guys think? Because he wants to get different ones. So he's for sure getting different ones. I need higher ones. But I feel like I would put these since they're a lot more comfortable and it's a daily. I feel like it'd be nice. It's great. Oh. 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 My goodness. We're not coming here no more. Sick ass fool. This shit's so fucking clean. Ready, Marks. What's up, bro? Even the interior is fucking clean. The owner of this car, his name's Freddy, and it's a 370Z. It's not an Ismo, right? Just regular? No, it's a it's sport. sport. Yeah, yeah, so it comes with the big brakes. They're Akabonos? Yes, yeah, it's one. That's what Marlon wants to get. Fuck that Tommy's low. You remember I told you I wasn't a fan of 370s, but this shit just fucking looks so clean. And they're smaller than the G's, that's what I noticed. The 19s fit so good. That's funny, they have, they have the same wheels too. Hey, quiet, fool. You're loud. This interior is way different from a regular 350. Yeah, I feel like the 350s are like more plastic. Like... Yeah, this is nice, dude. One, two, three. Short. This clutch is like similar, slightly harder than mine, but like a tiny bit. But what about the shifter? Short, short huh? Dude, that's nuts. Stock VHR versus full bolts on DE. That's pretty much where you get. They're literally the, at the same pace. So yeah. obviously this car has a high revving engine, so it should pull in the high end. But this thing has a lot of high end too. So that would that would be good to find out later. No time. We'll find a different course. We couldn't find one at short notice. What's up guys? So I'm finally back at my house and it was a long day, but it was pretty dope because we got to see Martin Risa 370Z. What's up, Vita? So 332 and Martin is 276 to the wheels. So if you, I mean, the three the VHR should be around like 270 280 there they should be kind of like even in a way or the VHR should have a little more power but that was pretty good that Marin kept up in the video it was kind of hard because one they started at different times and obviously like you see Marin pulling a little bit and then they let off and then on the second one it was a little different like there's just so much things so hope you guys enjoyed this video comment down below what you guys think of the new build and of Martin keeping up with a VHR. So on that note, like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you guys on the next one.